I bought these items at the exhibition, except the chuck I got that given. Now what I need to do is put a tape around the end of that arbor, the same as that one, so I can use this chuck in the milling machine. Machine and tape as is, it's not difficult. It's difficult to get the angle absolutely spot on. Uh, There's one or two things you must set up correctly. I'm going to actually turn this between centers. I think that's probably the most accurate way to do it. So I'm going to mount this in between centers so I can set the top side up exactly at that angle. So first thing I'll do is I'll just use this four jaw chuck. I'll put a center in there or at least a piece of steel in there and I'll turn a, a center out of it. Right, so I've got the compound slide set to 30 degrees. I'm going to machine a, a center on here, a taper on here, and it's got to be running through. It can't be anything else because it's been machined on the lathe. That's something a little bit more than mild steel as well. Right, I've turned the tip over. Probably now. So that one will fit in there and then the good tail sock centre and we'll show you how to crop things in quite nicely from there. Right, I've got the most tape or arbor mounted between centers. We'll have a quick check for run out. Zero, which I'll expect. Further up. Virtually zero. And on the tape apart. That we want to replicate possibly a tenth, two tenths at the most, basically nothing. So we've got that running nice and true. The thing we need to do now is trace this angle or at least set the compound slide to the same angle as that. If we wind the compound slide back and forward with that clock gauge touching on the taper when it comes to the point that the clock gauge doesn't move that means that this taper here is set to the same taper as that the problem is it's got to be exactly on centre height not somewhere near it's going to be exactly on centre height so what we need is some method of moving the gauge up and down to find the highest point on here which is the centre it's easy to do it on the top because you just move the, the cross side in and out but to go up and down you can't really do it with this setup. That's what you need to do. You need to go up and down like that and find the highest, the highest point, which is the centre. 
So this setup is actually no good at all for setting this taper um, because you can only get an approximation of centre height. So what we can do, or at least I think I'm going to try and do, this is the setup I'm going to use. I've got a dual height gauge mounted solid onto the compound slide, which means I can slide up and down that little DTI to find out the high point of the exact centre of that taper. I'll bring the camera in closer so you can see exactly what's happening. Right, hopefully you can see that. As I move that up and down, you'll see the you'll see the gauge move. We need to find a high point, which is there. So that's a true centre. It's starting to go down, up again, down, up. Right, so if I lock that off there, it means that that gauge now is exactly in the centre of that taper. Height wise, that is. Then we need to move. The compound slide back and forward until the gauge doesn't move. It's actually not bad there, but it's got to be absolutely perfect. Tapers are very, very unforgiving things. So it's just a case of adjusting and testing until I get that to the point where it won't move. Right, I think we're getting somewhere now. <coughs> we'll make sure that it is still on centre height. By moving that to the highest point which is there so that's dead on centre height I wind that up I'll zero the I'll zero the gauge wind it up the taper and it's moved two hundredths of a mil which is not a great lot Right, back to the beginning again, I've just moved it very slightly. Zero. Check my centre height. There's also a zero. I'll back it off and bring it back in to zero again. Right, when you're up the taper. I think that's as good as I'm going to get. Within a hundredth of a millimetre, which is for a mechanic that pisses about, I suppose, not too bad. It's another shot of the setup there. I've got a gauge on here, I just use as a reference just to see what actually is moving. Look the compound slide up and then I'll try it again, but hopefully. Bang on, so that's come on side now is set at the same angle as that taper. Right, I've got the Orient Arbor now set up between centres. It's running about as tall as you'd expect from an import arbor, it's pretty good, a couple of tents. Now if I away in the compound slide, if I away in the compound slide back, you'll see the clock gears moves because that's now set at the tape I will need to replicate. So hopefully now I can machine the tape around here and the chuck should fit. It may take a little bit of polishing to get it right, but it's going to be certainly very near. This setup here is working quite well. I need to modify one or two things, but basically it's it's working the way I'd expect it to work. Right, this is the basic setup for machining it. I've got it mounted between centres. 
I've got a drive dog on with some legs packing in there so I'm doing damage it and just a bolt on the choke jaw. It's not a fantastically strong drive but it'll do for what I've got to, to machine. You must be aware of all this spinning around, you just don't want to be getting stuck in there, no sleeves, no rings, no watches. Anyway, it's basically ready to, to start machining. Down a little bit, decent finish on it anyway. Once again, it's just time to say a massive thanks for watching, for clicking the like button, and as always, for all the well wishes that'll come near. Anyway, thanks very much. Don't forget, if you like what you see, click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.